Hello, magnificent eardrums. It's Thursday, 23rd of April, 2020, and we do warmly welcome you to the Voicing the World Late Night Noisecast, Episode 9. Once again, doing what we can and what we must to ensure feasts of reason, flows of soul, and stolen moments of bliss in the time of Corona. On the show tonight, we're bringing adventures in sound from British lyric soprano and English national opera Harewood artist Nadine Benjamin, from prolific composer in electronica, film and classical genres Kate Simcoe and her London Electronic Orchestra, and from the groove posturous drummer for David McAlmont, Roots Maneuver, Wildcard, and many more, Sophie Holloway. I begin tonight's episode as I find myself doing every Thursday then with a veritable shot put of gratitude for all of your wonderful feedback and interactions across the interweb, emails, text messages, the book face, and such. It's now day 41 here of isolation and lockdown in the Voicing the World bunker, and with so much great music as ever to swing our merry way through once more, I steer sharply tonight in the direction of our first Super Circle candidate. In this case, the profoundly gifted British lyric soprano Nadine Benjamin, about whom more after we hear her stunning rendition of Visi Darte from Tosca.
Nadine Benjamin there with Kamal Khan and the NB Opera Ensemble from her recent record, Love and Prayer. Nadine and I got in touch with each other via masterclass.com, a polymathic platform of instruction from the likes of Natalie Portman, Annie Leibowitz, Samuel Jackson and Martin Scorsese, to name but a few. Fortuitously for me, Nadine enjoyed my original song cycle for soprano and piano, The Avocatus Suite, Part 1, and amidst her run at London's Coliseum Theatre for the English National Opera's recent production there of Porgy and Bess, I was able, through another super circular, front of house manager Derek Lambden, to get the music and recordings of the suite to her. In the bloodied, But unbowed grand scheme of things, it is our intention to collaborate on a new recording of that suite, and I, for one, cannot wait to hear what Nadine will do with it, as well as what she will do with some other compositional adventures that I happen to have sitting around on the bunker shelf here. Until those future days in Revival City, I heartily recommend that you seek out all recordings that this renowned and ever-ascending exponent of song and innovative social initiative has available in the ether. So, links below as ever, folks, and please do make your enjoyment count. So what's going on? Well, to state the obvious, it's been another strange one, folks. However, next week we'll see the American Chronicle with Dr. James D. Boyes hit Spotify, Apple Podcasts and all of that, and that will be accompanied by a podcast known hereafter as the Rhetoricast from my public speaking and speech writing output via Cinespeak on those same platforms and beyond. And uh, the Rhetoricast will examine the ways in which language is used to present, prioritize and persuade in the contemporary Uh, situation in which we find ourselves here from uh, climate crises to the coronavirus. This very series of late night noisecasts, however, will stay exclusively on YouTube, as it is here that I am best enabled to share the wondrous music of my contemporaries and collaborators without censorship, while, all the while, ensuring that any and all advertising revenue makes its way in their direction. And as such, I thank you all, listeners, for your continuing loyalties to this particular means of distribution as such. In the midst of continuing reflection upon all that came before this crisis, I write here now against a backdrop of applause in our little pocket of London, the clap for carers of all descriptions across the UK who find themselves on the front line of a life and death conflict. At 8pm every Thursday now, I find myself turning to one of the bunker wall bookshelves here, seeing my trusty parade of Clive James' works, and reminding myself of his proclamation of purpose after the first wave of what would become the terminal ill health that befell him, in which he stated that the qualification of a good day's work would be forever measured against the work undertaken by his nurses and carers in the hospital in which he was first treated. Were he to even get close to the level achieved by those who tended to him in the simplest of care tasks, he would consider his output a, albeit weak in comparison, success. Once again, this show's Super Circle Explorations provide me with the weekly opportunity to ensure that I shout from the bunker all the praises I can muster, and our second artist tonight unquestionably qualifies for said praises. I take you now then to the Forge venue in Camden, circa 2013. Hitherto mentioned super circular Charlotte Harding and I had instigated a curated series of new music entitled Pangaea, named after the late uh, Paleozoic and early Mesozoic supercontinent, which felt to us a symbol of unified world vibiness. I don't know, I I heard it on an Attenborough documentary or something. Uh, Much like this show's format, it was our intention to program a multiverse of styles and the opening concert night featured the wonderful Kate Simcoe and her London Electronic Orchestra, 
crammed as the orchestra was into the very smallest of the forge's spaces, but nonetheless sonorous in their collective glory. With a track that takes me back to that happy time then, here now is XX Intro. Kate Simcoe and her London Electronic Orchestra there. Links below, and please once again make your enjoyment count. Around that same time, drummer Sophie Holloway began taking care of rhythmic business at many of the jazz gigs I found myself making vocal and piano-based noises on. Last week, we heard some music from saxophonist Vasilis Sonopolis, and I believe it was at a residency of his at the Lodge Tavern on Ealing Broadway, a glorious Sunday repeat of Jazz and Blues Review, that I first found myself in the rhythmic pocket of Sophie. In the jazz game, there is often much debate in real time as to where the band's sense of beat one of any given bar is. Sophie remains to this day the most assured asserter of where one, two, three, and indeed all the other beats were and should be felt. I swiftly sought to book her for any and all performances possible and, in particular, have many happy memories of my South Bank Centre debut at the Royal Festival Hall, wherein, with next to no preparation time at all, Sophie learned, innovated upon and blew out of the water all of the original tracks and arrangements from my debut jazz vocal record, Moving is Living, for their first performative outing. Sophie's profile and career is advancing unceasingly in the legendary direction. And it's a great privilege to round out tonight's show with a track chosen by her especially for the magnificent eardrums of the Voicing the World listeners. From band Wildcard 
and their record Beast from the East, Sophie Holloway on drums. This is the Empire of the Angels. I'm Michael L. Roberts. Be sure, as ever, to make your enjoyment of these incredible artists count via the links below. I shall see you Monday night for the American Chronicle. Good luck, and ever onward. <laughs>